Alrighty, welcome to this episode of Lectures with Liddington. Last episode, we talked about passive transport and the fact that there are three different types, diffusion, osmosis, and facilitated diffusion. So in this episode, we are going to focus in on osmosis um, and do some practice problems um, so that we can figure out what's going to happen to a cell when it is placed in a particular environment. So first, let's take a look at some um, vocabulary. When we are talking about osmosis and we're trying to determine what's going to happen to a cell in an environment, we have to talk about what solution that particular cell is in. Remember when we talked about solutions? It is uh, water with something dissolved in it. The, the solute is the stuff that's dissolved in the water. So when we talk about the solution that a cell is in, we can use three different words to describe the concentration of that solute. It can either be hypertonic, hypotonic, or isotonic. So a hypertonic solution, right, if you're hyper, you're really high energy, right? So a hypertonic solution means it has a higher concentration of that solute whatever that solute is, whether it's salt or glucose or potassium, who knows? It means that it is a higher concentration than the other side. If it is hypotonic, that means it has a lower concentration of that solute. So iso must mean what? We've seen iso before and it means the same, boom. That's what it means here, too. An isotonic solution means you have the same concentration of that solute inside and outside of the cell. So let's take a look at, at how we can apply this concept. So when we see um, osmosis problems, this is what they're going to look like. So they're going to give you a cell and a solution, and they're going to give you the concentrations. So in this scenario, you have to identify the solution based off how much solute there is. So it's hyper or hypo or iso. But the movement in this case, we're talking about osmosis. So water is what's moving. So to identify what type of solution it is, we have to look outside and inside at that solute. So in our first example here, we have 15% solute, whatever it is, salt, who knows. 15% salt on the outside and then 10% on the inside. So we have put our cell in a hypertonic solution because it's higher on the outside. So what's going to happen in this scenario is whatever that solute is can't move very easily. So instead of it moving in like simple diffusion would do, the water is the one that responds because it can move more easily. So we look in here and the water is 10% and the water is 85%. So the water will move out of the cell. So the water goes out, oops, which means the cell will shrink. So in that hypertonic solution, solute is higher outside, the water will rush outwards Think about homeostasis, right? It's trying to maintain a balance. And that's what the cell is doing here is it's trying to maintain that balance of the solute. So here, let's look, we've got 60% solute and 10% solute. So that is way lower outside, right? So that would be hypotonic. 
solution, so that hypotonic solution outside. And then my water, if I go back to my water, remember this is osmosis in this case, and osmosis is what's gonna move in order to help balance things out. 90% water on the outside, 40% on the inside. So my water is gonna move in, it's gonna fill up with water, so that cell is going to swell. So will swell. We'll actually fill up with water. If I go to my other scenario here, my last one, we'll do this last one. We got 25% on the inside, 20% on the outside. 20 is lower than 25, so we have another hypotonic scenario. And then we'll look at this, right? 80 and 75. So then the water will move into the cell to try to even everything out. And then my cell will swell. One more thing to note here. Notice I don't have an isotonic example in here. In an isotonic solution, the cell will remain the same. This doesn't mean no movement. It just means that it will move in and out equally. Um, one side might need a little more, one might side might need a little less, and it will kind of evenly flow in and out just as need be. Um, very much an equilibrium scenario because it is isotonic. It's the same concentration on either side. So one more thing to note here. In plants and animals, there are a lot of structural differences. We've talked about them already. Um, but they will respond uh, in osmosis scenarios a little bit differently. Um, and it has to do with this right here. What is that? Yeah, that's my central vacuole or my L. Oops, my LCV, that large central vacuole. And it is storing H2O, right? It's storing all that water. So that's what's going to respond. Anytime there is a shrinking or a swelling of the cell, you won't see it because that cell wall is so sturdy. You will see this. That LCV, that central vacuole, is what's going to respond, is what's going to actually do the shrinking and swelling based off of the water movement in and out. It's actually going to go in and out of that large central vacuole. So that's where you're really going to see um, that, that differentiation as it moves. Whereas in my animal cell, I don't have that large central vacuole. I don't have that massive water storage container. So it's the cell membrane itself that's actually going to respond to what's happening. There are two other vocabulary words that I want to bring up um, with this because how they respond is very different um, and in what kind of environment they're in can be um, just as much of a problem, uh, frankly, depending on what's going on. So in my um, plants, excuse me, in my animal cell, what's going to happen is um, if I insert it into a hypotonic environment, all that water is going to go in, right? So the water will rush in and that cell wall will actually and that's called lice. It will actually lice. So in a hypotonic solution, water goes in and cell membrane bursts. Another interesting scenario um, in my plant cell, I have what's called plasmolysis. 
And this is what happens if I put a plant cell um, into a hypertonic environment. Um, so in that hypertonic environment, all that water is going to go out. So that water rushes out. And then you'll see all of that interior, internal material, internal structure shrink down really, really small. We'll just say LCV. Hopefully uh, we'll have some time and we can actually do this little mini lab where we can see plasmolysis um, in action. It's really, really neat. You can see everything just contract down and get so teeny tiny um, because all that water is just rushing out of that cell in that um, very, very hypertonic environment. That's good for now. Let's uh, try a couple problems on your own.